That's Mr. Baumgarten again. And the last video I left you with these uh, eight by eight squares to kind of represent a chessboard. Uh, but we took the colors out of it in the last video so that we could use a for loop for the expositions. And I left you with a challenge of seeing if you could uh, reduce the repetition of this part appearing eight times. I'm not going to worry about giving you the answer to that challenge yes, just yet. First, we're going to solve the color problem. Uh, and to do that, we are going to introduce what's known as an if statement. And an if statement basically says, if this piece, if this equation or expression that I'm giving you is true, then run this piece of code. And if we think about it, uh, what's happening here is we need to alternate colors. And so if my last color was white, then my next color needs to be brown. If my last color was brown, then my next color needs to be white, and so on down the line. Uh, and so I can use, in the same way I've used variables here for numbers, I can use variables for written pieces of text. Uh, we call these strings. They have an uh, they are opened with a quotation sign and they are ended with a quotation sign. And then whatever is inside the quotes is my piece of text, which we call a string. And we've already used that here for this color variable uh, that's inside, uh, that's been used with fill color. So how about I just create an, another variable, next color, and we're going to start with white. So inside my for loop, I say this, I can replace this square at, go back to my square at with color, and just say, all right, use the next color. Whatever I've got stored in this is the, is the color that I want you to use in here to draw my square. Now, right now, this will just create a whole pile of white squares because we're not changing the value inside this thing as we go along. So after I've f drawn my first square, okay, and everything's getting painted as white right now because <laughs> square at doesn't do anything about fill. And we turn, so we turn the fill on, so that's fine. We're gonna end up with a white screen over there. All right, so I wanna ask the question, if next color, is equal to white. Now, here when I was doing a calculation and I saved the answer into a variable, I used one equal sign. This is a very important uh, thing to get your head around. When I'm asking a question, is this equal to this? Right, questions use two equal signs. Assignments or calculations use one. So if I did that, Python would still work and it wouldn't cause an error, but what it would do is, no matter what was in this, it would replace it with that. If I'm asking the question, I need a double equal sign. It's a very important thing, difference to get your head around. All right, now, so if next color is equal to white, colon again, so anytime I'm asking a question, or I'm defining a function, or I'm doing a for loop, I'm gonna have a colon, and then just like the others, all right, I had a colon and then I indented, and then when my indentation finishes, my function is finished. Here, when my indentation finishes, my for has finished. So once again, I'm gonna indent. And then when my indentation is finished, my if has finished. And so this code that I'm gonna indent here will only ever run if next color is equal to white. So what happens, I've drawn something with this thing called next color. Okay, I can call it whatever I want. All right, so I've drawn a square white, so I want to say, let's make the next color equals brown. Okay, so one equal sign to make it assignment. Now, if it's not white, then it means it was brown, and so the next square after that does need to be white. Right, and so else is saying, here, this is saying, this will run if this is true. Else is saying, if this is not true, then do this, okay? So we're, we're asking one question, and then if, if the answer to the question is true, do that. Otherwise, else, 
If, you know, if it's not true, then do that. So if it was white, make, it, make the next one brown. Otherwise, make the next one white. And now, if I run this, I should get alternating white and brown squares on my first row. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's only happening on the first row. And then I'm just going to get a whole pile of browns because that was the last color that I had that I set. Because uh, now we're just drawing squares and we're not changing the colors because I've still got this square out business instead of square out with color. So I could come in here and copy and paste this. Uh, yep, copy and paste this into here. All right, and this square out gets turned into a square out with color. There's going to be a problem here though. Can you see what the problem is? If I run this again, reset it, I will get my first row and that's going to work beautifully. But the start of my second row is going to cause me a problem. Well, first of all, I get a crash because I didn't add a color to this. Next color. And now we wait while wow, our turtle draws everything on the screen. And what do we get? We get a white and then another brown and then a white. All right, but chess means the colors have to be alternating here as well. Well, how can I fix that? Okay, now it's just drawing our browns. Don't think for a second that it was fixing up the alternating pattern. All right, because here I finished off with white and then I was just saying, well, well, sorry, we finished off with a brown, and then we said, okay, if if we had just drawn a brown, then the next color is equal to white. And so that's what it's done here. So I need to make this alternate the colors back again, just before I run this for loop. Okay, and if I unindent this, I'm doing this the wrong way. because it needs to happen after we've exited that for loop then we'll switch back the color once okay, and now we should get the second row should look correct that's better uh, and now, okay, so we've fixed up row one and two. Now we need to fix up row three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and as you may have guessed, to do that, we just want to, have, we need a for loop for the y values. And then have our for loops for the x values inside it. So if I get rid of that, and I'm going to indent all of this. and put here for row number in range zero to eight. All right, and then inside of that, we'll calculate our Y position. And that starts off, all right, we can, when at the, for the first row, row zero, we start off with a Y value of 400. So let's put in 400, and then we need to subtract 100 for every row, so times that by row number. And then I can take this Y, put it in here. And I will now get my entire chessboard with minimal repetition. I really should have turned off the pen. So I will keep getting the lines drawn this time but you will see or you'll get the entire chessboard. This is where I need the little speedy up video. Get some fast moving music going over the top. As long as row three works, we know we're fine. Look at that. We are alternating back and forth and we are gonna end up with our entire grid. Our chessboard is done. We've used four loops and we've done used if statements to automate the entire process with really very little repetition. Think about 
just how many lines of code will be going on if we were drawing all 64 of these squares manually. But I think the entire thing has been done with even less than 64 lines of code. That's not bad going. We're almost done. I'm just going to drag this out for the last minute while it finishes off our chessboard. And the last row has worked. And we have our chessboard. Woohoo! All right. So we have seen ifs, statements, uh, performing conditional calculations. This is Mr. Baumgarten, signing off.